subscribe. Um, it's basically free math tutoring because what I'm really trying to do is, you know, push this idea that math is really for the streets mm. because you know, our tutoring is cool <laughs> and I tutor a lot of people um, and it's it's uh, it's valuable work. It's actually invaluable work, but I really want to, you know, democratize mathematics instruction and I want to make math available to everybody. You know, as long as you got Wi-Fi, as long as you got a internet connection, as long as you got data on your phone, even if you don't got Wi-Fi. So, you know, you get the same top tier quality math instructional lessons, you know, from my YouTube channel. You know, you might see some videos on there with me and my, my daughter, you know, or, you know, one of my other children on there. Because I'm also, the channel is not really just for for children and for students. Right, right. I'm really trying to start, I'm, I'm not trying, I am. I'm starting a movement where I'm educating parents mm. on how to do the math that they either never learned back in the day or that they forgot back in the day <laughs> for the reason of, so that they can help their own children with the math homework. Mm. So the video is also catered to the parents as well. Parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, big cousins, um, any old, old heads on the block, you know, whatever. You know, because I think that's important. I think that, we have to start to value mathematics more than we typically do. And we should be able to learn it in our communities because school, in my assessment, we have to reorient ourselves in terms of how we view school. Schools should become places of practice as opposed to the primary location for primary education, right? We should be able to go to school and practice trigonometry that we've already learned either in our house or on our block from some elder or in a rec center or, you know, on the corner if it's warm outside. Um, Cause I mean, that's how we learn so many things in our neighborhood and among our people already anyway. Mm. And then we go to school and we practice those things. You know, like if you roll dice in the bathroom, you usually don't learn how to roll dice in school. You already learned it in your community. You just go to school cause you say, okay, I'm trying to make some money. So, you know, we're going to play pity pat or we're going to play cards. <laughs> but I learned, I learned at home. But I bring I bring my deck of cards to school so I can make money in school. But I already that's a skill that I already knew. But I'm just using it and practicing it when I'm at school. I think mathematics should be the same way. So um, that's really you know what I'm what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to really change how we view mathematics, how we think about mathematics. I'm trying to show the relevancy of mathematics. And yeah, so that's a, that's that's a little bit about me. I'm, I'm building up my YouTube channel. Um, I have my first book coming out next month entitled. How to Use All This Math, Volume 1. It's really a guidebook for parents and, you know, elders and community members to, right. to be able to, to show them how to take everyday activities that they do anyway, whether it's riding in a car, whether it's making a sandwich in the, in the kitchen, you know, whatever you're doing already. And I'm showing the mathematical aspects in those things, right? And showing how math is really regular. Math is normal. Math is typical. Like I said, math is for the streets. Math is for everybody. You know, typically the way it's taught, is in a way where you would think that math is only for a select group of people, like as if it's exclusive, right? Um, but it's really not, it shouldn't really be exclusive, you know, ideally. It should really be something that everybody can tap into and everybody can use. But we as teachers, we have to do a better job of showing people the relevance of it. And a lot of times we don't we don't do a, that good of a job. I know a lot of times early in my career, I didn't do a good job showing how relevant math was, you know, to really everything that we do. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just that's just a little bit about about my background, all this math, my teaching background. And um, and yeah, another thing that's very important that informs my practice is the fact that I'm a father, a father of three. And, you know, I, I want another reason that the YouTube channel is so important to me is, is because and why I want to appeal to parents is because I never feel the anxiety about my children's math homework that a lot of parents feel. Mm. And that's a real thing, right? It causes a lot of stress in the household. You know, we joke about it, but that's a real thing though. You know, um, you know, you see the social media memes about, you know, when Johnny, if Johnny has three apples, right? People make jokes about that, right? But that's a real thing though, especially the way mathematics is being taught now in 2023 is very different from the way it was taught when I was in elementary school right. and when a lot of parents were in elementary school, there are different methods that are being offered. And I think those new methods are beneficial because it helps our children to be able to think differently and have options in terms of how they can look at math problems, how they can look at everyday, you know, math problems. But I really want for parents, more parents to be able to feel like I feel, you know, whereas they don't feel any anxiety when their child come home and they're like, Ma, can I help you? Can you help me with my homework? Dad, can you help me with my homework? Grandma, grand, grandpa, can you help me with my homework? 
I want them to feel, I want parents and adults to feel how I feel. So that's why, that's why I'm like pushing my YouTube channel real heavy because it's a way for you to, for free, you know, but I even had, you don't even got to cut a check. You but for like, free, you just got to subscribe. That's yeah, all. Just, just like and subscribe. Just go in there, watch some videos. I think every topic is broken down into different playlists and you can learn some math. You can learn the math that you never learned 20 years ago. You know, and, so, and sometimes too, like just to pick you up off of, of a few things you said, it's, not, it's like a matter of parents not really having the time to do so or pay attention. And that's where maybe you can come in. Maybe that's something you can build and start from there because a lot of the time parents just aren't paying attention to the, to the kids at home. They, you know, they come home, they're tired, they're sleepy, they just want to just cook dinner and go to sleep. And like, hey, they don't even start talking about the kids' holiday their day, but I'm not even going to all that stuff. But it's like, you know, maybe that's an outlet for for parents to maybe could could if they don't know, they're not saying they, they, they don't have not all of them have time, but if at least they know they maybe that's night like, I cannot help you with this assignment or I don't know how to here. Go to the you can make that you know, make these kids actually use technology to their advantage, not just watching videos online and music videos and listening to all type of stuff that's irrelevant to help them in their future. And maybe they can come to a channel like you, be like, hey, I don't understand this map. Maybe I know this person who has this YouTube channel can break this thing down for you better than I could have ever and to give you some false information. It's not even true that you going back to school looking crazy, sounding all stupid for your classmates and all that stuff. So, you know, and, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. And, and we're going to definitely get back to that later, too, because even so, and we'll get into that because we was talking about um, the reason, of course, one of the reasons you, you came today because you want to speak on rap, right? You you see my video last time that I made on the negative effects of rap music towards the youth, and it's, it it ties into a sense of paying attention, and maybe that parents are not paying enough attention to what their you know their kids are doing at home and what they're listening and what they're doing on their phones, and like you said, hey, maybe you could use your phone and to your advantage. And actually do something that's educational to help your future versus I'm not saying, that, you know, if you want to be a rapper, you can't do it. But a lot. Not everyone's going to make it in life to be a rapper or an entertainer. But everywhere in life you need, you need math no matter where you at. Yeah. And I just feel as though, like, especially coming from where we come from, we, I don't know why is it that we push entertainment, you know, and sports so heavily, but not the education. Well, I know why. I can tell you why. I, mean, that, I definitely want to hear input on that for sure. You know, you can definitely stop yeah. me anytime and, and, and speak on that. But I just think that's yeah. one of the things, because like I said, when I spoke on the negative impacts on rap, you know, music on the youth today, they're taking everything like just like you said, com like you were saying earlier when you were talking to me before we started commercial rap. Yeah. Right. Like you feel that everything is just stereotyping. It's just pushed for a certain angle to give to the youth. Yeah. And I definitely would like for you to speak on on commercial rap, actually, on, on, and what that is, because some of the things I didn't know, I was surprised to hear you say earlier. Yeah, so, so I mean, we think about why it's called commercial rap, um, meaning, you know, the rap the rap music that you can readily hear on the radio. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't listen to radio, but, you know, if it's readily available even on YouTube or right, on right. social media, or if it's one of the songs that you can put behind your TikTok videos or put behind your Instagram stories or whatever, um, it's a commercial. It's meant to sell something. It's meant to sell products. It's meant to sell lifestyle. It's meant to sell certain ideas, mm -hmm. ideas that help to maintain the status quo. Um, it's not it's not meant to help people to realize their full humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, we was talking about earlier, I think that one of the things I think that we should have, we should be more precise in our assessment of commercial rap music and we should create mm -hmm. some different categories for it. Like there should be a category for black on black violence music. Right. There's, there is a such thing as black on black violence rap. Um, and black on black violence is a thing. But in the context, we have to contextualize it properly because a lot of racist people like to speak about black on black violence or, you know, Negroes like to speak about black on black violence right. as a way to promote this idea of black pathology. Whereas, though, we want to act like uh, intra, intra group violence is not a thing. People commit violence against others they are in close proximity to. So that therefore... There is also a such thing as white on white violence. There is a such thing as Chinese on Chinese violence. There is a such thing as Arab on Arab violence, right? As such, there is a such thing as black on black violence. So, and there's a lot of music, a lot of commercial rap music that is distributed by white controlled record labels, which serves to maintain that reality. And it's always interesting to me, this contradiction, how you have... Um, uh, uh, 
major radio, major radio stations promoting um, stop the violence rallies and stop the violence block parties. Mm. And they'll invite artists to come out and perform. And the artists will perform <laughs> violent songs <laughs> that promote gun violence, that talk about gun violence and glorify gun violence. And these kids go back to the hood after that concert and go mimicking the same thing they just see. And I'm like... Am I the only one that sees this? Is hearing this? Like y'all don't really see this contradiction? And I mean, you know, and I'm able to easily see it because of my mathematical understanding. Because because whenever you recognize a contradiction, that's a mathematical assessment that you're making. So to so again, that's like reason number seven thousand nine hundred eighty two. Like of when you're going <laughs> to use this stuff, right? Because you know, students always ask the question like, "Why I got to learn this? Why are we te- why are you teaching this? When am I, when am I ever going to use this?" Well, the thing is, a lot of people aren't going to use it. And we see why, and we see the effects of that. Because again, you'll have a major radio station that will have a so-called Stop the Violence rally, a Stop the Violence concert, and you'll invite artists that rap songs and sing songs about violence. Mm. And then people don't even see the contradiction. They don't see like, well, this don't add up. How how y'all how is y'all do how does this make sense, right? So because we don't have the mathematical understanding. Because we didn't really understand geometry, we didn't understand algebra, we didn't understand fundamental math in elementary school, we don't see nothing wrong with that. We just want to dance and shake our ass and do hips.